resetting our DNA is a hot topic at the moment. Yeah. Well, I know a place that does it every day. <laughs> and it's just over there at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's the way we look at our farm. And that's where we get massive carbon growth. When we actually give it the soil, the ingredients, so that the cyanobacteria can go to gear, go go to work. And then the carbon growth, which means we're actually in the right place. Right. So were there any surprising interactions between the seawater and... Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that was the, the big hitter, was when we put the serpentine on. Yeah. There was a few paddocks that we couldn't get to at that stage with the helicopter, uh, with the um, spreaders while we were putting the seawater on. And okay. so where the cows were or animals, and we couldn't get it on, and we put it on afterwards, didn't didn't fire at all. It just... Wow. It just pretty okay and it took me a long time to unwind it and i thought the serpentine was just the magnesium i was after mm. but what we inadvertently did was give the cyanobacteria magnesium and silicon to actually build the structure which the microbe needs mm -hmm. to grow mm. and we had an explosion i mean the farm just exploded i remember mike ross and i can still remember him i'm opening a gate to him and he goes when did you regrass the farm, you in? <laughs> I said, I didn't. And he was just like, what? And it did look like I'd regrass the farm because it was it, there was so much germination and it was just beautiful over the whole place. Mm. Wow. And that was an interreaction. We had the electrical side working. We brought some more silicon in with the uh, serpentine. We dropped the cyanobacteria on top right at the time and boom, it just went. Bonkers. Wow. And it was fantastic. Can this be the chapter where you discuss whatever happened to Serpentine briefly? Because I know you mentioned it in the prior chapter and it, what was the, what time frame are we talking about at this point in your life in the chapter? Because when you were using it before it was taken off the market was about what year? Mid-2000s. I, I started really getting into it. And All right. It, so and anyone interested in the history of the events that took place there, what, what, yeah, why like, was it removed? What was it uh, that, based I, on? I think know, a cost effectiveness of Mike pulling it out of the ground because they, they, were, they were having trouble filing the seams. I, I don't know how many tons they dragged out of the ground for right. an area. So for the person who doesn't understand, this is pulled out of rocks? Yeah, it is. A, it's a mining operation. I mean, there was a hell of a hole in the ground what they used to dig it out from. Okay. Um. And I don't think that it financially viable. And then the, then this whole thing came about that um, I think there was a big issue about asbestos as well. Even I was going to just ask you about that. So is it viewed as looking a lot like asbestos, yes, but, but it wasn't? Is. Yes. Okay. That's right. And and you know, like you could tell from the people that worked at the quarry, they all didn't get asbestos poisoning or anything like that. So, so it wasn't asbestos. No, it wasn't asbestos. But, you know, like you come along in a chemistry perspective and say, well, that's asbestos and going, well, no, you got to look at the layering structure and all the other. And I, that's something I don't fully understand, but I did take a lot of notice at the time and certainly didn't see any of those effects of asbestos poisoning on any of the workers or anything else. Okay. So serpentine is in the category of fertilizer. Well, it was in this country. They used to put it in with super phosphate and make serpentine super as a like a, a, a mag super, yeah, okay. as a magnesium supplement, and and it was good. Uh, anything better if you did these other things with it. Well, yeah, put it this way: I'd never seen a reaction with um, serpentine like what we got out of the electricity and the other bits and pieces. And I don't think Mike Rorison had either. Okay, and he just like what? What have you done? So, uh, do, am I right in thinking that when they can find an area to mine? that could be useful on a farm, then it only has a limited life until the mine's ex yeah, well, I mean, depleted. I don't, and I, then it's like a fashion. It's like it comes for a few decades and it's gone because, you know, they can't repeat something once they've used it up. That's right. Yeah, and uh, I had this long discussion last night about these issues of people having choices. You know, like in this world, time we have choices for some things and then some of those choices should never have been given like the likes of DDT should never ever have made it into the mainstream agriculture but it was a choice to put DDT on to kill your grass grab or it was a choice for fertilizer companies to put it in there or it was a choice there and then one day you know the books like Silent Spring that you know really showed the DDT issue um, especially in the bald eagles in the US and, and all of a sudden 
it's gone. End of story. Because they realize how terrible it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's gone. So farmers had to find something else to do. So, like, so this is a problem, right? Because whether it's DDT or serpentine, if you're relying on something that's only going to be around for a while, you base your whole practice around it and it's gone and you haven't learned how the rest of the biology works, you're really stuck, right? Because you, you, you've lost a huge tool and you don't know what other tools you can use. That's right. I mean, the same thing with the basic slag. I mean, it was a brilliant product. Then, you know, as I spoke about in previous chapter, it, then it caused all sorts of mayhem and then it was pulled from the market. But all it did was give you an opportunity to see something. Well, it, that's the way I look at it. It, was, it gave me an opportunity to see something that I would never have seen before and then try to come to grips with it. What was it that we saw well, how do we do this in nature? Or how did nature do this before? Because invariably, nature always had the answers and always does. Well, speaking of Maynard Murray and his information to use seawater as fungicide, how did that influence your perspective? Ah, just let's go try it. And, you know, those vegetable growers that put some on and tried it, they said it was the fastest fungicide they'd ever had. And that was at six to one. And, like, this is the sort of stuff that, you know, facial eczema and all this sort of stuff. You know, they're going on about these researches and all this stuff and all these bloody zinc products and all these fungicides that you've got to use. And it's like, just get a life for you. Puts, if, he, if you've got a problem, you've got to spray it quickly. Mm. Go and get some seawater or put some lime on or both. Keen to dive deeper? Check out our audiobook and Eco Farmer's Discovery on Spotify or grab our free ebook, The Six Things You Need to Improve Soil and Farm Profit. Links in the description.